Hello, it's Dave. Got a game here for us. This will be uh, French Defense. ECO code is C13. Players are Pestalozzi and Dumb. This was played in uh, 1908. And we're going to be looking at uh, the advanced variation, how it cuts the board in half, and the Greek gift, which is a sacrifice at H7. Normally you'll see the sacrifices at H7 with the light squared bishop uh, in Queen's pawn openings but also can happen in uh, other openings also. And today we're going to see how it works in the French. The game opens with e4, e6, d4, d5, normal moves to the French defense, knight to c3, knight to f6, bishop to g5, bishop to e7, bishop takes f6, bishop takes f6, and now e5. Black plays bishop to e7, and you can see how these two pawns here have cut the board in half where black's got uh, queen side and white has king side uh, space advantages. Next move is uh, bishop to d3 bringing out the light squared bishop preparing castling and also the bishop is aiming at the h7 square which is kind of the key to the uh, Greek gift sacrifice. Next move is c5, a normal developing move <coughs> excuse me, in the French where black will be attacking the base of white's pawn chain. And now white plays d takes c5 and bishop takes c5. Queen to g4 threatening to capture at g7. Black castles and now white plays knight to f3 and one of the key successes to a sacrifice of bishop takes h7 or the, is that white controls the g5 square he needs to be able to control this so he can bring his knight there as part of the follow up attack now black plays knight to c6 and now we'll start the sacrifice white plays bishop takes h7 check King takes h7. Of course, black could decline, but um, he did not in this game. And now white plays queen to h5 check. Now many times you'll see in this uh, sacrifice, the next move is actually uh, many times is knight to g5. And in this instance, it is winning for white, but it's not as strong as the game move. <coughs> Excuse me. And when you make this sacrifice, there are many little nuances that will determine whether you should make your next move a check with the queen or make the check with the knight. And it's, it's position by position. I, I wish I could give you a, a, a definitive key, but I cannot. It just um, as you play it more and more, you'll kind of pick up the keys yourself. The next move by black is king to h6, which is the best move, and queen to h4 king to g6, f4 supporting the knight so that black, I'm sorry, so white can make a check at h7 with the queen. Black plays knight takes e5, queen to h7 check, king to f6, f takes e5 check, and even though the knight at g5 it would be very tempting, it's not the best move for black. Black's best move is king to e7, getting the king out of the center of the board over to the queen side so it can be defended by black's pieces. And now white plays, queen takes g7. And one advantage that white has is that he can push now this h7 pawn up and possibly queen it. So um, that kind of gives you an idea of one variation, how the uh, knight to g5 check could work out. But like I said, the strongest move, going back after uh, the 11th move, king takes h7. In this instance, the best move is queen to h5 check, forcing the king back to g8. Now white plays knight to g5, threatening mate at h7 with this queen. And in order to avoid this, black plays rook to e8. Of course, um, Black could have played queen takes g5, preventing the mate, but then you're losing your queen, and you're going to lose anyway. 
So I'm just kind of showing you uh, this main line here. And this next move is a very key move in this variation. Instead of moving queen to h7, white must play queen takes f7 first. Just to give you an idea, uh, going back one move here, if white would play immediately queen takes h7 check, the black king is able to get out of the check, I mean out of, out of the mating trap and move king to f8, queen to h8 check, king to e7, and now queen takes g7, king to d7, queen takes f7 check, rook to e7, queen to f6, and again you'll see white's theme of moving the h pawn up and possibly queening it. Black has got his queen, uh, I'm sorry, his king out of the uh, direct attack of the uh, white pieces, but he's also lost all of his kingside pawns. Um, black has uh, one that white's two bishops in exchange for his knight and three pawns, so you can say material is even, but white has a very strong uh, kingside pawn advantage where she can push up the board and very easily uh, queen a pawn, and this position is also winning for white. But uh, it's not over yet, so it's very possible white could make a mistake and black could come back and still either equalize or maybe even win, though it would be very difficult. But going back to the move after black had played rook to e8, moving the rook out of the way so that the king has an escape square, white makes the correct capture of queen to takes f7 check first. And the uh, best way to explain it is just to show you how the game progresses. Next move is king to h8, queen to h5 check, king to g8, and now queen to h7 check. The king moves to f8, queen to h8 check, king to e7, and now queen to g7 check. By capturing the f7 pawn first, it moves a, removes a defender for the black king and he has nowhere to go, especially since uh, White had pushed this e5 pawn up and had split the board with it. It all prevents the black king escaping to the d6 square. Well, that's how uh, the Greek gift sacrifice could work in the French defense. There are many uh, other games with the same theme and same ending. Uh, so I hope you enjoyed this one, and I enjoyed bringing it to you, so thank you very much.